<laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Um, and thank you, Holden and Lori Beth and Rob um, and Wellington as a whole for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, it is a, it's a privilege um, to be asked to be a part of not only this event, but especially honoring these two um, exceptional people and the newest members of the Hall of Fame. Um, I, I got to know them when they were very young and to see where they are now and how their paths have gone is amazing to me. Um, as the father to three daughters, um, to be very candid with you, I can only hope that at some point someone would stand up here and say something like I'm about to say about them about my kids. Um, so it is a, it's, a, it's a privilege. Um, in all honesty, if you would have told me looking back, watching Colleen and Kara play basketball as freshmen, that I'd be standing here inducting them into the Hall of Fame as lacrosse standouts, um, I would have probably told you to just take a deep breath and we'll see how things play out. But um, I do remember vividly seeing those basketball games, having an inkling that they were both people we needed on our girls lacrosse program if we wanted to elevate it to another level. Um, it was going to be talking them into doing that that became one of the bigger hurdles. Um, but once we did that, almost from day one, um, they took care of the rest. Um, and to have two kids like that in the same class was fantastic. And I'm going to refer to you as kids because I'm a dad now, so you're still kids. Um, so with that being said, you won't be surprised throughout this to hear very similar thoughts. Um, it's not that I'm lazy, I promise. It's simply that they have the intangible qualities, they share these. Um, they have differences, but it's those qualities that Lindsay alluded to that made them who they are and helped elevate the program to where um, we were able to get it to. Um, you won't hear me talk a lot about the awards they received um, or the records they set. It's in the pamphlet. It'll be on a plaque. You can read those things. Um, but what you can't read is the kind, of, the kind of people that Karen and Colleen were and are and will be. Um, and to me, as Lindsay alluded to, that's really what separates them from folks that don't get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, and if I know either of them, as well as I think I do, if I stood up here and just rattled off records and told you how great they were on the field, they'd be kind of annoyed by that anyways. Um, so, without further ado, Colleen Durfee. So you get to go first. I went reverse alpha, and you were a goalie, so I'd give you the privilege of going first. Um, so I remember watching Colleen play point guard as a freshman and thinking to myself, that I couldn't remember a time seeing a kid at that age compete like that. She was talented and athletic, and she was tough and had a confidence um, about her that didn't allow her to back down. But if anything, I saw a kid that was learning how to balance competitive spirit with being calm and poised under pressure. But at that age, having that competitive spirit was rare. Um, she had the physical tools. But what stood out was what was going on between her ears and very obviously in her heart when she played basketball. And as any coach will tell you, it is a competitive spirit that drives everything. Um, it is what allows a player to risk failing in order to try and achieve success at a higher level than most people probably think that they can. Um, as my college coach and mentor said to me still to this day, when it comes to athletics or business or most things in life, as I have now learned even as a parent, for those that want to be great, the joy comes from the competition, um, from risking that failure and losing to see if you can win and be great. Um, and I could tell from the first basketball game that Colleen enjoyed the competition um, and that we needed her on the team and in the program. Um, I just had to convince her to do it and why it was important for her to do it. Um, at this point, it's probably fair, and I was telling Mr. Konchik this earlier, it's probably fair to say that Lacrosse was not really a high priority on Colleen's athletic radar. Um, she was a soccer player, basketball player. It was definitely not her priority sport at this point. But it was more of a, yeah, it seems kind of fun and the team's pretty good, so you know, let's, let's go see what happens. And then our goalie got hurt. And then Colleen's lacrosse experience changed. <laughs> she was asked to step into the biggest role on a team with final four aspirations and fill in for a senior all-state goalie recovering from a broken collarbone. It's like welcome to the lacrosse program, Colleen. <laughs> no big deal, but we're glad you joined us. Um, and as you can imagine, Colleen did great literally from the first shot she faced, which is why we're here. Um, any anxiety or fear she may have felt or complete disdain for her coach for putting her in that position, she never showed. It was all about doing her job to the best of her ability and giving the team the best chance to be successful. 
She was a leader from the first moment she stepped in goal, and I saw in the lacrosse field what she had shown on the basketball court. Her competitive spirit to succeed would push her through the challenging times, and as a goalie, there are plenty and plenty of challenging times. The occasional doubt and would inspire teammates to raise their level of play, which to me is arguably the most important thing a great athlete can do. Once again, there was other really good players on those teams, but what made Colleen special was her ability to set the bar high for how things should be done and hold that bar steady every day on and off the field. I'll share one quick story that stands out from my time coaching Colleen, both which show why she was able to go from a first year goalie as a freshman in high school to a division one commit to Brown as a, as a senior. And having recruited at the college level for a while now, I can tell you how rare it is for someone to make that jump. Um, and especially in a position like goalie. And it never happens, ever. You never read about a kid playing goalie at the Division One level that picked up a goalie stick their freshman year in high school. Um, but it speaks to what I've said earlier about Colleen. Um, the story that stands out to me was following a home game after playing one of the Dublin schools. We didn't play well. The vibe of the team had been off for a while and we were a little lost as a team. At this point of in my life, I wasn't married with three daughters, so the understanding of managing an emotional group of women was not a skill I had quite yet acquired. <laughs> after the game, I was cleaning up the field and noticed that Colleen was still over on the bench long after everyone had headed towards the stands and for their cars. And to be honest, my first thought was, please don't let her be injured. <laughs> when I went over to see what was wrong, what followed was a long conversation about what we, using that pronoun, could do to turn the team around. It wasn't a bunch of complaining from a teenager, which is shocking. It wasn't a bunch of complaining from a teenager because she was the last line of defense. Once again, as a goalie, for some reason, all the glory goes to those who score goals and all the blame goes to those who let them in. It was a thoughtful, passionate conversation about finding a solution so that we, collectively as a team, could be successful again. To this day, it ranks as one of the most rewarding conversations I have ever had with a player that I've been lucky enough to coach at any level of the game. As a coach, your hope is that you can coach a group of kids that care about each other more than winning and care about winning more than their own success. And in this day and age, that combination is very rare. Colleen was that and is that and will continue to be that. And I could not be more proud to and humbled by the opportunity to induct her into the Wellington Hall of Fame. Congrats, Colleen. really happy to be here. If anyone can hear me though. Um, <laughs> thank you for my friends and family, boyfriend being here. It means a lot. This induction is awesome. But I think that it's more about what Wellington gave to me because I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be coached by fantastic coaches, to make friends through teammates, to do all the other extracurriculars that I was able to do while playing those sports if it hadn't been for Wellington. And that support is what allowed me to grow as a person and be, be who I am today. So it's an honor and it's super humbling to be a, an alum worthy of the Wellington Hall of 